Greetings, people. Today I have a story for you all. Now, we all have aliases, right, that we use in games and on forums for characters or whatever. Here are a few of mine from over the years. They all came from something at some point, and they range in level of embarrassment, but it's time to talk about the newest addition to my list, Plug Walk Tony. I received some positive feedback for the name over on Twitch, and I'm just here to clear the air and admit that I stole the name straight up. So let's dive into a specific day in classic World of Warcraft, a day that included a chance encounter with a gnome, an unlikely alliance, and a robust cast of villains. This is the legend of Plugwalk Tony. Just a warning before we get started that this is before I started making any video content or streaming, so we're just going to have to get by on some screenshots, but I think the story will stand on its own, I hope. So let's boogie, bros. Our story takes place September 2019, Stranglethorn Vale, also known as the Vietnam War on a PvP server. So on this particular day, Consul the Mage, me, was walking north from Booty Bay along the path, when off in the distance, Consul spotted something. Enemy spotted. Something pink-haired. It was a gnome twitching around wildly in the brush. Consul put his hand on his frostbolt holster and approached, sky. giddy at the opportunity to not only kill a gnome, but a pink-haired gnome at that. This calls for a celebration. But, you know, first impressions can be deceiving. So as Consul got a little closer, he tab-targeted the little bastard, and the nameplate appeared. What a name, what a name, what a name. Oh, yeah. Plug Walk Tony was the name, and killing was the game. He was intrigued and relaxed his bloodthirst to approach a little further. This is when he noticed something key. This gnome had no weapons, nothing, only bare fists and pints upon pints of rage. And the mission was clear to wipe out the gorilla population in the region with his bare hands. So here we have our very first screenshot and official look at Plugwalk Tony, his most recent victim sprawled before him on the jungle floor. Also here on the left, you can see this Torin, who is a key character. Plugwalk Tony already had an observer, dare I say a fan, perhaps even a, a coach, and Consul gladly joined in to watch the show. After several minutes of enjoyable monkey death, Plugwalk Tony finally turned to Consul and the Torin to acknowledge the support that he had been given from the sidelines of his crusade. With a gentle slash pat on the head, he turned back to his task and slayed several more gorillas when disaster struck. An evil, heartless, butthole <laughs> undead warlock was passing by and decided to murder Plugwalk Tony. Consul and the cow tried desperately to talk sense into the warlock, but death was swift and death was final. There's no other screenshots, unfortunately. They kneeled at the feet of his lifeless gnome corpse and pledged to never let this happen again. When the pink-haired gnome returned, he returned in high spirits, dancing and jumping and pulling five gorillas at once to be killed by the beasts almost immediately. But this did not hinder Tony's ability to party either. He seemed to be beckoning the two hordies deeper into the jungle. Reinvigorated at this brush with death, he led them up to the path where they mounted up and followed Tony's rallying cries forward through the jungle. Consul had a pretty good idea of where they were headed. The Gurubashi Arena, the Blood Bowl of classic World of Warcraft. Did Tony want to fight? Was it a trap? A friendly round of fisticuffs? They didn't know, but they were so heavily invested in this little guy now that they were on board with whatever antics he got them into. So they dismounted and RP walked as a trio up the ramp, or you could say that they plug walked. And like the warrior kings of old, plug walked Tony pointed into the pit and jumped in himself. The purpose for this visit was obvious now. He was done with gorillas. He meant to trade knuckles here, now, in the sand with us. Consul wasn't much of a fighter being a mage and all, and I think he only had like four unarmed skill or something like that, so he stepped way back and took on the role of a referee for a few rounds. Plugwalk Tony struck with precision and strength, besting the big cow multiple times before yet another tragedy took place. Yeah, there's just several of those in this tale. A no manner, stinky night elf druid came in and murdered all three multiple times, putting an end to the sparring matches and killing the fun. They were forced to the sideline to recharge their batteries. Here's a great shot of Tony looking off into the distance, determined yet unafraid as our hero. And it's important to stress how incredible some of these punching duels were. There were several higher level alliance and horde watching and cheering, just an incredible scene. It was time again to move on, though not yet time to part. 
Tony had more in store and directed the party south on the path back toward Booty Bay. It was rather clear to the threesome that after such bloodshed, that it was time to turn up. But things would not be so simply done. This stretch of road has been known to be the deadliest in all of the Eastern Kingdoms, and on this particular day, four travelers would be encountered. The first traveler was Ro, the orc warrior. Apparently a member of the retail dev team, Consul and the cow immediately sought to protect Tony from this potentially evil and greedy individual. He circled Tony a few times, you know, he's a bit lower level. And Tony actually threw several punches that landed squarely on the orc's pectoral muscles, but nothing more would come of this confrontation. This would serve as a warning for what was to come on the path. The warrior ran off into the jungle like a madman to farm Mount Gold for the next eight to nine levels. Ready to work. The second traveler was a priest who loved to fear, but he was in fact the one who was terrified. At first sight of our entourage, Cthulhu of the guild Your Waifu is Trash, God, immediately sought to break our fellowship by fearing Tony off the road and into the brush. But Tony came flying in with a charge and started throwing haymakers. Cthulhu began casting spells, much to the chagrin of the consul and the cow. They screamed and pleaded to fight honorably, to lay down all magics and pointy objects in favor of the ham hammers that all living beings are blessed with. And to all of their shock, the priest silently obeyed. He stopped casting spells and unequipped his weapon to go blow for blow with Tony. It was only when he was low on health he actually re-equipped his one-handed mace to try to get it in some cheap shots. A dirty tactic, to be sure. But this next shot captures the actual moment that Tony landed a crit to drop Cthulhu like a sack of potatoes. The third traveler was Pop Tab, an orc shaman with a quick trigger finger, but infinite wisdom. Without a second thought, Pop Tab leapt into battle, unloading his full shamanic kit on Tony. But as Consul and the cow pleaded to fight with honor, Pop Tab took a knee. He patted Tony on the head and laid down his weapons. He would meet Tony in single combat and even wait for them both to reach full health. And what happened next is still sung about to this day. An epic flurry of pink hair and green skin, sweat and blood and poo flying through the air until staggering back out of the mayhem, Tony found himself defeated. But before the final blow was struck, Pop Tab bent the knee. The Knights of Plugwalk Tony had gained a new member, a strong member, an honorable member. The now foursome of companions would have one final traveler standing between them and the tavern in Booty Bay. And this is perhaps the true antagonist of our story. The following image is unedited. The fourth and final traveler was none other than the evil orc hunter, Gnome Killer. Gnome Killer quite literally came out of the jungle like a runaway dump truck. He smelled Plugwalk Tony's gnome aroma from the Badlands and plowed through the world like the juggernaut to find him. And upon finding him, he killed Plugwalk Tony until the cows came home. Tony's crew pleaded, they howled, called for honor, fair combat, mercy, a lawyer, anything. But Gnome Killer uttered just one sentence in response. You can almost feel a tiny bit of remorse. Perhaps he was born under another name and this titled Gnome Killer was thrust upon him. But the madman felt nothing as poor Tony fell time after time. At last, Gnome Killer smelled some other midget and ran off, and Tony was free to make his way to the safety of Booty Bay with his friends. It was then that the group held a parade in honor of this great journey. It was started as a crusade against gorillas transformed into an epic tale of friendship, blood, and honor. Consul and the cow hailed those in the area to come in and join the festivities, and before they knew it, the crew had grown to six deep, seven, eight, and everyone was dropping stacks of silver on booze in the tavern. I'll take a milk. Certainly, many screens grew blurry this day. In the madness of the celebration, Tony drunkenly tiptoed up the stairs. With Consul and friends not far behind, he pointed forward to the great fallen mast at the top of the tavern. What does this mean, the others thought. Does he want us to jump, to sacrifice ourselves, to just go for a swim? Consul stepped forward, but so then did Tony, and he himself walked out onto the gangplank. The others stood by in awe. Some kneeled, some cried. Everyone nodded to themselves solemnly. 
With a final pat on the head, Tony turned and waved goodbye to us. He turned back out, looking over the town and the water below, and jumped. Tony was never seen or heard from after this. I actually played on this server for months afterwards and never saw this guy again. As a pretty small alliance population, I saw a lot of the same people out PvPing, but you know, I choose to believe that Tony passed into myth upon hitting the water surface. So that, my friends, is why I occasionally use the name Plugwalk Tony to pay tribute, you know, to this guy who gave me a super fun and memorable experience with the game. It's also just a hilarious name. And this is the sort of thing I love about Classic WoW, you know, especially when it first dropped. It's just the spirit of the game was back and people were approaching their time spent with it in every way imaginable. So Tony, bruh, if you're out there, thank you. And to all of you who watched this whole video, thank you. If you uh, like this video, I'd love to do more kind of story time content in the future. Uh, but regardless, I appreciate your time. Peace out.